Hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? This week we're going to take a jaunt down uh, memory lane and we're going to kick things off here. We're going to kick things off with WordPerfect for DOS and actually WordPerfect for a lot of operating systems. Uh, WordPerfect was the state-of-the-art word processor in the late 1980s, early 1990s before windowing systems, you know, Microsoft Windows and everything became mainstream. And uh, it looked like this and it was blue and red and gray and it did equations and it did images. It did all kinds of amazing things. Uh, you had to know what you were looking at. It didn't have a WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get interface, but it had a lot of fans. It worked very well. It was fast. It was powerful, did all kinds of stuff. The WordPerfect Corporation created it. They came up with WordPerfect for Windows. That ran pretty solid. By about 1995, the WordPerfect software had been acquired by Novell, who uh, you probably know from making Novell Netware, if you'd ever worked with that back in the day. And they bundled it with Quattro Pro, which was a spreadsheet. Presentations was like a PowerPoint competitor. Uh, Info Central was like calendar management and that kind of stuff. Envoy was an alternative to PDF. It was a portable document system. Groupwise did email and calendaring and Paradox was a competitor to Access. So basically this was a complete office suite that was not Microsoft. And then uh, what it was missing, what was kind of conspicuously absent from this, was graphics. Because the state of the art in the 90s on Windows was CorelDRAW. And CorelDRAW was awesome. Uh, you know the thing about Star Trek movies like uh, number two, number four, number six, number eight, the even numbered ones are the good ones? CorelDRAW was the opposite. Odd numbered ones. One, three, five, seven, nine were all really, really excellent uh, products. Uh, even numbered ones, not so much. But uh, I used CorelDRAW for everything back in the 90s. I loved it. Amazing piece of software. Absolutely fantastic. Then in 1996, Corel acquired WordPerfect Office. So suddenly we had one software house who had a word processor and a spreadsheet and presentations and email and graphics and all these kinds of things. And they're clearly kind of looking at Microsoft's dominant position in the desktop computing market and thinking, uh, you know, what can we... Uh, we want to do that. What can we do to, to get some of that action? And what happened in the next couple of years? First of all, they tried porting everything to Java. WordPerfect for Java and CorelDRAW for Java did not really work. I don't know why. Uh, you know, I, I remember a lot of excitement about this kind of never went anywhere. And then uh, Microsoft ends up in court. Microsoft gets uh, prosecuted by the Department of Justice in the United States for anti-competitive behavior. The DOJ is basically saying, look, you've put Internet Explorer in Windows, which means that everyone who uses Windows is just going to use the default browser, which isn't fair to Netscape and Opera and all the other browser companies. And so this is grinding on and Microsoft is looking a little bit shaky, a little bit vulnerable. And in the middle of all of this, Corel comes out with Corel Linux, a Linux distribution that includes WordPerfect. And uh, this was pretty amazing. Like this is the first time a really big corporate software company, uh, you know, we had Red Hat, we had Slackware, we had Debian, we had, a, you know, SUSE, a whole bunch of small companies, if you like. Like the first thing they ever did was produce a Linux distribution. They weren't already established companies. They weren't known for anything else. But Corel, everyone's like, really? The, the Corel draw people, the word perfect people, they're doing Linux in a box and putting it on shelves in stores where people could go in and buy it and take it home and install it. And yeah, that's exactly what they did. And it included WordPerfect, uh, like a cut down version out of the box, but it also included, you know, all of the Linuxy things, Apache and Mail and News and C++ and, and all this kind of stuff. So this could have been a best of both worlds kind of operating system because they'd also ported CorelDRAW and the complete Office suite. So WordPerfect, they actually rewrote or they actually ported that natively. WordPerfect ran natively on Linux. Um, CorelDRAW and Quattro and Presentations, they all ran on top of Wine. And an awful lot of the code in Wine come the Windows emulation layer for Linux, uh, that came from Corel porting Office to it. They had a bunch of engineers who were like, we need to get uh, all this stuff working so that we can run our Office applications as closed source applications on top of the, the Linux or the GNU Linux operating system. And uh, yeah, if you're using uh, Linux out there today and you're running Wine and you ever do any printing, you're probably using code written by Corel's engineers. Now, I went digging at this point because uh, I thought, I wonder if you can still find this stuff. I wonder if any of this is out there and uh, we can still still fire it up and still get it to run. And I discovered that on the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive, if we go onto 
uh, archive.org and you search for Corel Linux, it's all there. All of the ISOs are there. You can download the disk images. You can find a Corel Draw for Linux. You can find WordPerfect for Linux. Uh, you can find all this kind of stuff. So I downloaded the ISOs. I tried to get them to run. Uh, this was hard. Like the Hyper-V, don't want to know about it. The Even the oldest virtual hardware that Hyper-V exposes is still way newer than anything Corel Linux knew how to run on. Uh, same thing with VirtualBox. I tried that out as well. Did not have any good results, but QEMU worked eventually. And there it is, it's Corel Linux running in a VM on Windows 10 in 2024. Uh, if you want to know how I did it, check out the link in the description where I'll walk you through all the incredibly <laughs> meticulous steps it took to get this thing working. But uh, let's, let's log in and see what this thing can do. Now, Corel Linux shipped with a bunch of really interesting stuff. Uh, the main one, the one that kind of got a lot of attention at the time, is it shipped with WordPerfect. And at the time, there wasn't really like a, there were plenty of text editors on Linux for, you know, programming editors, but actual word processors that regular folks wanted to use to write reports and, you know, memos and stuff, not a whole lot. So WordPerfect on Linux was kind of a big deal. Now, one of the reasons why Corel Linux kind of failed is that it it wasn't really a sort of first-class citizen in the Linux ecosystem. Like WordPerfect ran on it, but WordPerfect wasn't open source. You couldn't get the source code for WordPerfect. It ran, uh, they ported it, but it was distributed as a closed source binary. So as far as the Windows crowd was concerned, yeah, why would we use this weird Penguin operating system to do something we can already do on the code we the platform we've already got. As far as the Linux crowd was concerned, it's not open. You can't get the code. This doesn't really fit with our ethos. And so it kind of fell between these two uh, these two sort of principles of what computing should be about. But you know, it was there and it worked. Hey world, look, WordPerfect on Linux. My typing has not improved in the intervening 25 years. And, uh, you know, this had feature parity with everything on Windows. It could do equations, it could do images, it could do all that kind of stuff. Now, this uh, distro that I've got running here, what I've done, I've pulled the, the Linux ISO, I got that up and running, but then I've also, on uh, archive.org, on the Wayback Machine, I've pulled down ISOs for the full WordPerfect Office Suite and for Corel Draw. So running on this VM here, we've got a, uh, we got an applications, I got WordPerfect Office 2000, uh, I've got Paradox, which was their competitor to Microsoft Access, like a full desktop database authoring system. Now, WordPerfect was ported to run natively, but everything else in here, Paradox, Quattro Pro, Spreadsheet, uh, Corel Draw, we'll see that in a second, all of that stuff's running on top of Wine, the Windows emulation layer for Linux. And yeah, there you go. You want to do drag and drop, make your own database. Uh, let's call this Linuxy demo and OK, and we can browse on that. And uh, let's look at this. Now, one of the big kind of lasting uh, effects of Corel Linux, this is all running on KDE. And this was the first Linux distro where it was one of the desktop managers, KDE, but all of the icons had been created by actual artists, like people who were good at drawing icons. And this was a game changer. Like it really challenged that whole ecosystem. Come on, do better, look better. Corel Linux looked fantastic. It was a really, really kind of good OS. So let's stick a thing on there and finish and see if we can do that. Do I want to create a new directory? <laughs> yeah, quirks. Yeah, uh, there we go, unknown alias. It had a lot of rough edges. Let me see if I can find my desktop folder in here. Um, I know you folks did not tune in here just to watch me make databases, but there it is. We got a database, we got a visual database designer. Um, so we got Paradox, there's presentations on here, which was a, uh, a presentation tool. Uh, oh, there we go, let me bring that back. And also I've installed the Corel graphics on here, so I got Corel Draw version nine. Now again, you can see there the boot up, it's initializing kernel 32, user 32. So this is running on top of Wine, the Windows emulation layer. Um, but otherwise it did everything on uh, Linux pretty much that you could do on Windows at the same time. And again, it had the same kind of perception problem. None of this was open source. So a lot of the Linux community were very kind of hesitant about embracing it. And the Windows community, like, well, we don't get why we should be why we should be running Linux on this. Uh, why do you need to switch operating systems? Um, so what I've done in this image is I've actually copied across a uh, 
a bunch of the clip art that came on one of the other CDs that ships with it. Uh, so we've got some wonderful state-of-the-art late 90s clip art. There you go, look. Look at this, it's a picture of the internet in Corelda or clip art format. And you can see just how kind of clunky this was, like it had a lot of rough edges. Let's open up that one, there we go. And uh, I can go on here, let's zoom to fit. Where's that thing gone? Uh, let, me, let me full screen that. There we go, and zoom, and to fit. And there it is, a picture of the internet, because it's a mouse plugged into a planet, because of course it is. Now I do actually have a network connection running on this. If I'm gonna applications, I got Netscape Communicator here, which was, uh, nobody remembers any of the other bits. Navigator was the browser, Messenger was the email thing, uh, Netscape Composer was a thing you'd use to write your own web pages and upload them via FTP. I can't remember what Calabra was, and I don't think anybody ever used it for anything. Now, the biggest headache with browsing the web on a virtual machine running an operating system that's 25 years old is uh, the TLS, Transport Layer Security. Today, the web is almost all secure. There are very, very few websites that don't use HTTPS, and most websites now are running TLS 1.3, or at the earliest, 1.2, and the latest dialect that Netscape Navigator can speak is 1.1, which was deprecated, I think, in 2008. So we can't get to all of these, these built-in bookmarks here are going to apps.corel.com. Click here to go to corel.com. Sorry, Netscape and this server cannot communicate securely because they have no common encryption algorithms. But there's a couple of sites out there. So if we go to google.com, Google still has an insecure version of their main homepage search, and we can go on here and we can actually search for stuff. Corel Linux, there we go, and we get results. Now, uh, it's kind of amazing that any of this stuff works at all, and of course we can't click through to anything because every single one of these links is to an HTTPS server that says, no, we have no common communication. But I do have, so I got some old code. I got an old website that I built, uh, like the first version of my own website, and I resurrected that and I stuck it up on um, uh, dylanbt.github.io. So this is like little archive snapshots, and I switched off HTTPS just for this demo. And yeah, you can see uh, a bunch of things that I did on here, and this is a website I built in 2007. Uh, 1997, sorry, that uh, has a, you know 3D models of a, a bunch of Star Wars 3D ships that I built way back when. And Netscape is having a little think. Let's wait and see if that's going to come back anytime soon. Uh, no, Netscape is, is, is struggling and Netscape has fallen over. Let's kill Netscape and start Netscape again and see if we can get that back up and running. Oh, there we go. It came back there. Let, let's bring that back up. Now, you know, you can see how, uh, how rough the edges on a lot of this stuff are. Um, but this was a really kind of interesting... This could have turned into something amazing. You know, Corel Linux was the first time a really kind of heavyweight commercial software company. They'd bet the farm on Java a couple of years earlier. They tried porting CorelDRAW and WordPerfect to Java, and it just it failed. You know, WordPerfect for Java, I don't think it ever even shipped. Um, and so they pivoted to Linux, and they went, let's go all in on Linux. And, you know, I, I don't think it's exaggerating to say they thought maybe they could be the next Microsoft. You know, Microsoft kind of replaced IBM when computing shifted from mainframes onto desktops. And I think Corel was like, look, if this Windows thing doesn't pan out or if the Department of Justice deals some kind of killer blow to Microsoft, we want to be poised to take over. And uh, they thought embracing Linux would be a good way of doing it. It's not what happened. It, uh, it was never really certain who it was for. I mean, I loved it, but I'm weird. The Windows people are like, why would we want this? And the Linux people were kind of very wary of a big commercial, we sell software for money player getting involved and running a lot of closed source software on top of what you know was a, an open source or a free operating system. Now, uh, what actually happened, the way that this played out in, in reality was, uh, Corel ran out of money, Borland were about to acquire them, and then realized they were making a bad deal here. That left Corel completely bankrupt, um, and they were saved by Microsoft. Microsoft put in, I think, about $135 million. And uh, very shortly after that, 
they stopped working, Corel stopped working on Linux stuff completely. Um, now, kind of, you know, the commentary interpretation says Microsoft was very, very wary of being seen as a monopoly. They didn't want WordPerfect Office or Corel Office to disappear, so they put in enough cash to save that so they could turn around to the court and go, no, look, there's this other Office suite that's doing really well. And, you know, whether it was an explicit condition or Corel just pulled the plug on Linux for whatever reason, uh, I don't know. I have no idea. But it's still out there. It's on the Wayback Machine and uh, getting it up and running, like I said, took a little bit of effort, but it was a sort of... Uh, a wonderful uh, journey down something that could have been. You know, it's maybe with a little bit more timing, slightly different strategy. We could have seen a world where by 2005, Corel Linux was running maybe half the desktop operating systems in the world with WordPerfect Office and Corel Draw and Netscape. And uh, that whole kind of, you know, the era when Microsoft dominated desktop and internet computing, maybe it didn't happen. But uh, that's not how it played out. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that little jaunt down memory lane. Thanks a lot for tuning in. It's been fun talking with you. You take it easy. I'll catch you next week.